Oh, hey, everybody. Um, I must tell you, I guess it's just because I got good people. I can't help it because I've had so many channels taken away. And my thoughts are so um, uh, rigidly boxed in, I guess, that uh, eventually you'll, you'll find people that have at least the ability to kind of think it over. Anyways, folks, um, I really wasn't able to do anything today. I kind of vegetated in my car uh, because there's no need for me to be riding around. I've got a very weak tire right now, too, uh, with almost no tread left on it. So I don't want to be doing any driving that's not necessary. So I'll just uh, tell you why I'm making this video. I just listened, and again, this uh, full-spectrum survival... He tends to whip people up, but uh, I, I looked earlier on Drudge and I didn't see anything about this, but uh, on Crux, I had heard that um, Russia is opening a can of whip ass on Bakhmut. Now that's what I heard. Bakhmut is getting lit up, big time. Uh, opposite of what they're trying to tell us here in the United States by those things right there. Okay, they look a little different, but that's what's doing it. It's supposed to be these uh, KA-52 or whatever those are, those alligator helicopters with the double blades, along with a hell of a lot of ordnance. Uh, I was uh, I, on crux. This is not full-spectrum survival. Full-spectrum survival is reporting that... Uh, the, uh, Russia has taken out uh, a, a 10 HIMARS or 6 HIMARS in uh, Bakhmut or in, I uh, forget, not in Bakhmut, I, I, I forgot now, it's either Bakhmut or Kherson. So while the people believe that we're winning in Ukraine, we're getting our living asses handed to us. And as usual, your government doesn't want you to know that we're not where Ukraine is getting their ass handed to them. But they want you to think that they're winning. Ukraine is just a matter of time before they win. And winning means there'll be nobody left in the country. And then your children will go. You like that, stupid idiots? You want your children to go to Ukraine? Is that what you want? Keep it up. Keep it up. And by the way, I'm an equal opportunity put-downer. Putin, you're an egghead. Why haven't you listened to me? I've been telling you I gave you the keys to the kingdom. You're like my friend MJ, my, my ex-friend MJ. You don't listen. Your time, your window of opportunity is running out. You can stop this war. You can stop it. But no, you got your damn head up your ass. Why don't you be a man and stop this war? Well, I'm not interested in, uh, you know, uh, doing anything other than uh, going and attacking these missions in Ukraine. Oh, you're not interested? Well, don't worry. The interest will find you, Putin. It's going to find you. It's like my son. Oh, I'm not interested in politics. That's all right. Politics, generally speaking, will take an interest in you. Well, I just wanted to set up a lemonade stand. Yeah, well, it's against county policy. You can't have one. you got to apply for a permit. This happens all the time. It happens here. You can't even have a yard sale unless you get a, go down to the wait in line over there at the, 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 the city county office and apply for a permit for five or ten bucks, whatever the hell it is. It's unbelievable. Well, this is why I've been trying to tell that egghead Putin. Yeah, you're not interested in doing this? Well, don't worry. The interest will come to you. I assure you. This isn't going to be your own little private war in Ukraine. It's not going to work like that. You're running out of time with what I'm telling you. Small ordinance bombing the gas stations in Poland, bombing the gas stations in Finland, bombing the gas stations in Sweden will get the civilians on your side. 
That's what it'll do. But you haven't thought about that, have you? You want to keep pummeling uh, Ukraine, which I understand. You're taking out all the infrastructure. That's understandable. That's not going to stop the military from coming at you. You need the civilian population to stand by you. Not your Russian civilians, but the civilians from Denmark, the civilians from Finland. The Finland woman there, Miss uh, Shake Her Booty there, that one there that dates only guys that are driving a Lexus with a, a nice little, um, you know, not really shaven too well. That dumb, you know what? I can't say it too loud because I'm walking here. But I will give the woman credit. She came out a couple, a few days ago and I read it and she said, we're at the mercy of the United States. We don't have this money to be sending all of our military equipment, the little that we have. And then... <laughs> You know, I would talk to my friend, my, my ex-friend MJ about it, but he's so stupid I can't talk to him one way or another. There's nothing to say. If I talk to him about how the, the, the Swiss military will step in and come to the rescue, he would probably have thoughts on that. He wouldn't even understand that the Swiss don't even have a, an army. They don't even have a military. Much like Costa Rica and Central America, they don't have an army either. There's no standing army. But when you get people who feel like they're really, really brilliant and have nothing to offer because they don't understand anything, they haven't learned history or anything else meaningful in their lives. These are always the people who want to spar with me. That's why I look at you people, not my subs, but that's why I look at you like you're a bunch of cow dung. What the hell do I care about you? I don't. That's why you don't subscribe to this channel, by the way. Thank you, number 25, whoever you are. That might be my Organite friend. Could be. But I'm running out of patience with you people. Just like your great blow Joe leader there said. I'm running out of patience. Gotta start uh, making it so nobody can work unless they do something. Right, remember? You're a great hero. So what's the point of this video? point is full spectrum survival I just listened to it about 15 minutes ago he's indicating that there's a lot of strikes or a lot of something it may not be strikes but it could be sabotage it could be who knows but there are a lot of things burning in the country of Russia deep within its borders folks we're playing a dangerous game this could accelerate into a world war. And Putin needs to get on with it. This is what he wanted. I'm not blaming the man. I'm actually blaming him because he needs to do what's right. And what's right is start to take out the gas stations all over the EU. And that can be done with hypersonic missiles. Um, he could start taking out... Uh, gas facilities and infrastructure in Poland or Finland and you watch how quick Vlad you watch how quick these civilians start going out and marching and making problems for their governments because they don't want to do this and that's your best ally and you still haven't figured it out you're still playing your silly ass game in your head in your own head they're not going to let you run roughshod uh, across the battlefield in Ukraine. They're not going to do it. The United States is going to stand in your way. Forget about the EU. The EU can't do anything except sit there and hold their putt in their hands. That's where that one stupid woman there, the prime minister or whatever the hell she is, shake your booty there. That girl, that, that attractive girl, I think, uh, I think it's Finland. And, you know, she came out and she said it. She says, well, you know, we're, this is dangerous. We're at the mercy of the United States. They're the one with all the money. They're the ones with all the troops. So it's about time for Vlad Putin to stand up and be a man and start taking out the infrastructure of Finland and Poland, as well as other countries, while you still have a chance to do it. 
Because you're going to have to do it anyway. Because this is what's coming. This is what's coming. And we all know it. So it worries me. Uh, the strikes into Russia could cause anything from a response in a, a conventional way to tactical. And those are the mushrooms. Tacticals. It depends on how Russia feels about how dangerous it is to their existence. And uh, that's all I have to say. I'm not trying to be mean to the man. I don't dislike him. But I'm running out of patience with Vlad because he does not want to see what is very, very clear to me. And what's very clear is that there is no way that this is not going to spread in some fashion or another, especially with what we're seeing right now. So you might want to check out Full Spectrum Survival. I only listened to it for about five minutes. And, uh, of course, I left him a comment saying, what's up, Brad? But uh, me and Brad don't see eye to eye on everything. But um, although a little bit beneath me, I still see him as a brother. It's just that he, uh, I think he deliberately does things in the way that bring him viewership and uh, scares people. I don't try to do that. Of course, I'm not making money on my channel either. You know, I don't make anything. And I never have. The most I've ever had was 250 people or 260. But then they shut that right down. And you know why. That's why. That's why I can't even... You can't even say anything now. So that's it. Um, I wasn't able to really do anything today. Uh, I just took a almost a mile walk here. Not quite. I'd say it's probably around uh, maybe a little bit more than a kilometer. Maybe seven-tenths of a mile. And uh, this morning I did the same thing. So I guess I walked about a mile and a half, two miles today. But I stayed put and I didn't go anywhere because I have to go back to work at six. And I don't like to push it because the place that I work right now is so far in bumfuck Egypt that, you know, it would take forever to get help. So I don't want to try to go in on the mark. So therefore I just ordered a pizza, which I never do. Uh, and I didn't want that pizza because that pizza is no good. They don't put any tomato sauce on it, but I want. I, I, I don't feel like driving across town. So um, yesterday I went out and I bought some. Uh, um, I bought some a bread for a dollar over there at the Dollar Tree, dollar twenty-five. And then uh, today I went to Dollar General, and I bought some things for my son. And um, I bought, uh, you know, that goober, the uh, peanut butter and jelly that's already mixed up. My son loves it, by the way. It's always begging me for it. But I already bought him a lot of peanut butter and a lot of jars of jelly. He's just too lazy to make it. <coughs> I always tell him, oh, you know, Dad, can you, give me, can you send me some more goober, that stuff, that striped stuff? Uh, Race, you already have it. How many, how many jars of, of grape jelly do you have? And you don't even have to put it in a spoon. It's like you can squeeze it on the bread. How many jars of, of peanut butter have I sent you? No, you don't think about that. See, that's how he is. Now he's working me for a GoPro. How you like that? You know, the GoPro, the camera you wear on your head. Now he's saying he's working me. My son is so smart in a devious way. And he, now he's, he, he's um, he, you know, and he knows how to work me. You know, I'm sure all fathers say the same thing. I mean, I wasn't ready for all this, honestly. But. You know, my son is now uh, representing this as the idea that, uh, you know, his mom can watch him because he can live stream it and she can keep an eye on him. So, you know, he's always, he's got me in checkmate every time. So, anyways, the last thing I'll tell you is I went to Walmart. I didn't go to Walmart. I went online and I was going to buy all this stuff. Um... All this raspberry um, mango puree and all that and I was gonna send him T 
tea bags, which I did already. He's got quite a few there. And um, they're just learning about iced tea, real iced tea. Um, so if you make it, then you have to buy sugar, of course. Brown sugar is preferable over there uh, for, you know, because it dissolves easier. And, um, oh, the sun is killing me. I hate it. I know it's still only 81 degrees, but I'm so tired of it. I've had a whole summer of it. Uh, so I kind of gave up the ghost and, um, I didn't completely give up the ghost. I had, I had, um, I did buy him mango slices. You know, they're not even freeze dried. They're just like regular mango slices. So I bought some of those. I bought uh, 10 pounds of them, as a matter of fact, five pounds each. And, uh, I'll be sending that on Monday. And then, um, I bought some strawberries, some freeze dried strawberries, but they're not very much, you know, especially when you're sending them, you know, like, you know. How long is it going to last? Two weeks? You know, that's why I try to buy stuff in, in a large amount where it lasts for a while because I got to ship everything at high cost and it takes a long time. So, um, you know, my idea was to send him a peach puree and, um, you know, uh, freeze dried peaches to, you know, go in, in the tea that he'll make. But I just found it to be easier. I found a brand called 4C, not High C. And not Lipton. But I think if you go to any store, you'll see 4C. And that's iced tea mix. It's got the sugar in it already. And these are great big cans of it. It makes 35 quarts. So what is that? 35 quarts. Uh, I said 7 gallons, isn't it? Or more. 8 times 4 is 32. Eight. So maybe almost 9 gallons. Maybe almost 9 gallons of, uh, of iced tea. So I bought them 10. And uh, that's going to take up almost the whole box in itself. But I figure that's the way to go. You know, because he doesn't have to go buy sugar. He doesn't have to, you know. And, and I still sent him mango strips. And then I still sent him some other stuff too. But uh, the mango strips and I sent him some strawberries. So he's got a couple pounds of strawberries. And uh, he's got 10 pounds of mango strips that he can kind of put in there and, you know, nosh on a little bit. That's Yiddish for snack, by the way. Yes, I know a little bit of Yiddish. That's why we're calling Kanye West. We're calling him Ve, short for Oy Ve. So, anyways, that's the bottom line here. And um, I've got about another hour and then i got to head into work. But it frustrates me because it's like I'm the only one that knows what's going on practically these days. Everybody else doesn't seem to be interested in watching the news. They, they all think that we're winning in Ukraine. They all think that they, are, they just believe whatever they're told to believe. They don't think. They don't understand. They don't want to do anything in the, in the world of educating themselves. Nothing. They just want to believe whatever's told to them. And by the way, our good friends at the Atlantic, you know the Atlantic there? Okay, who pushed the heroic people who brought us this, burning the candle bright. Those idiots over there, those corrupt pieces of garbage. Oh, they're saying it looks very much like there's another scam coming our way. The scam numbers are going up. Oh, all those good people over there at the uh, Atlantic. Oh, folks, we are in such trouble. I listened to the Alaska Prepper. And that guy's pretty smart, I must admit. Now, I don't know if he's as smart as I am when it comes to scamming, because he's probably still a believer in the scam. In fact, I can tell you I'm almost 100% he is. And what's sad is that he should know better. He should know better than that. But, again, what can I tell you? People don't want to let go of the fantasy. They don't want to let go. And there's nothing I can do about it. There's just like nothing I can do. They don't listen. And that will include the Alaskan prepping, prepper. Alaska prepper. AP, I think is what they call him. Nice guy. Truly nice guy. But, just what I told you. So, anyways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sign off at this point. I looked at the news. There's nothing really happening of any consequence. Except... 
I uh, heard Brad over there at Full Spectrum Survival, as I told you, uh, saying something like there's all sorts of uh, burning things over deep into the country of Russia, which is worrisome. And the, uh, according to Crux, um, massive damage going into uh, Bakhmut. And it looks like they may take Kherson too, or Kherson. The Russians may take it because they are blasting away at the Ukrainian forces. They're taking out, they're taking a tremendous toll, is what I hear. So, anyways, folks, take care. Have a nice rest of your weekend. Didn't seem like a weekend to me. This new schedule is really, really hard for me to get into the swing of things here. So, anyways, take care. I can't wait to pick up my raspberry iced tea. That's what I got. I, that's what, I don't know if I told you, but they had those big things of 4C. And uh, they make uh, 28 quarts, I think. I think it said 28 quarts. It might be 30, 35. I don't know. But it's at least 28, which is 7 gallons. And um, they were $5.50, no tax. So I can't, I can't refuse that, you know. I have to just kind of let all that stuff go with trying to buy raspberry puree and they had a beautiful deal on plum plum puree uh, and I wanted to buy it and it's cheap it's only $67 for 44 pounds that's cheap that's like um, maybe three uh, for yeah, it's, no, it's like four it's like four gallon containers maybe not maybe it's a little thicker than water so it, it maybe it's around three gallons something like that maybe two and a half gallons because of the thickness of it but um, you would have to buy two to make it pay for the shipping. And it's $60 for the shipping. So it's $180. And I just figured it was easier, you know, to do this. And then I'll show you what I got my son. I got him this. Uh, they seem to think that this one is the best. This Louisiana. They made it and they liked it. So I said, um, that's good. I'll go ahead and do it. And then I bought him these quick grits. These were only a dollar thirty-nine over at uh, Fresca Moss, so I got those too. And then I got one. I got a couple other things. I'll show you. Um, I got these, and I recommend that you do this too, just on general principle. Like when you're playing, po like you know, when you're playing poker, you know, if you, you know, you pick up an ace, you just, you know, for for the basics. Um, this is uh, soy meat, although I don't like it. Um, this is soy uh, beef flavoring and uh, we're going to use this in tacos and put it into the spaghetti because um, any kind of meat is ridiculously expensive over in the Philippines and these are big number 10 cans and these were I think these were $17 each so I think that it's a pretty good deal so I bought four of these to send to my my son and um, uh, I got these over at the dollar, um, dollar Tree, but I think these are kind of cool. And when you make it, it smells heavenly, I will say that. It's a vanilla bourbon, um, Jim Beam, which is bourbon or whiskey bourbon, whatever it is. And it smells really good. And um, I can set up and I can have a cup of coffee. And then what I did was um, I sent my, my son about uh, 25 Frisbees, but that's not enough, of course. 25 Frisbees is not enough, and I can't afford any more, so I got him another uh, Frisbee. This is another world-class 119. It's a good medium-range Frisbee. Not good for distance, but minor distance, yes. And then I got this right here, uh, which I'm not going to use anymore. I'm going to send it to my family uh, because it sucks shit. Don't buy this. Um, heavy cream, heavy, you know, powdered heavy cream. I got it because in my car... If I leave it for two or three days, you know, like it goes bad unless you have a cooler or something. And the, the temperature is just not coming down this year. Because normally in the winter, you know, you can get a big thing of ice and it'll last for two days. But that's not the way it is now. It might last for three days if the temperature really comes down. But it's not been doing that. So uh, don't buy this. It was $16 a can. Uh, I was lucky. I called Amazon and I told them that one of them had a leak because I had two of them. And um, they gave me a refund on both of them, which I was happy about because it's uh, 16.87 for one. 
So I was really happy about that. And then <coughs> I got this. I don't know why I bought this. I was just going to buy chicory. You know, the, the people in New Orleans and in Louisiana, they like chicory. And my ex-landlady that died, Charlotte, she told me chicory, it's like a little flower, but it's like almost like wood. Uh, it's hard to explain. But um, the chicory, I think they used to add around 15%, if not 20%. And I experimented with it around 25 years ago, uh, back in the uh, late 90s. And um, you can't put more than like maybe 25% chicory in the coffee because it'll make you itch. At least it makes me itch. It makes me break out. Uh, so, I, I mean, I like the flavor of it. It makes it real nice. It takes the bitterness away. But um, people feel like they're getting gypped because, you know, chicory is just like a really cheap weed. But I got this coffee here called Cameron, Cameron's. Uh, and it was $5. I, you know, I figured, why not? I'll give it a try. It doesn't seem to be flavored. It says woods and water. Woods and water. I don't know what this means. It got a good review. People from Australia were giving it a good review. People from the UK were giving it a good review. And they said it wasn't real strong. Because I don't like real strong coffee, you know. Uh, and, e and even these flavored coffees can be kind of passe. Sometimes it's just nice to have a nice cup of joe, you know. Uh, but this one says that it's a light grind. It's a light roast. So we'll see. And uh, that's about all I can show you right now. I did break out my, my second microwave. And I used it last night. And it works fine. But I didn't use it on my solar generator in the car. I just used it. Uh, I plugged it in. This one is a lot lighter than that other one. I regret that I bought that other one now. Because I bought that other one because of the fact that it ran on low, and it would run at uh, 674 watts, 702. And this thing, it gobbles power. It's only 600 watts, but like I told you on that video I did, uh, uh, the, the microwaves, this one won't draw anything less than 12 to 1300 watts at any given time. It turns off. When you put it on medium, uh, the magnetron comes on and it cooks, and then it turns off. You can hear it. And then it just doesn't do anything. You know, it's, it's the timer's going, but it just turns off. That's all it does. And, it, you know, the microwave just keeps going, but not the cooking element. And that's the only thing that happens when you turn down a microwave. Then it turns back on after 45 seconds or 30 seconds or a minute. And the, the 1300 watt magnetron comes back on again. So it's all bullshit. So uh, I had originally bought the smaller um, solar generator, and then I returned it because... I don't need another solar generator that doesn't fucking run a microwave, which is what I needed to do. I need to cook sometime if I don't have power, where I, you know, when I'm at a construction site or whatever, you know. So I wasn't going to have it. So I I went ahead and I went with the bigger unit, that uh, LEOC. Um, you can check out my review on it. If you ever need one, that's the one I recommend you get because it's very good. Nothing stops that. I mean, you can plug in a 2,500 watt thing to it. It doesn't stop. It just runs. And uh, I didn't need to buy that other thing. It would run this very easily. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm sure it will. Um, it, it, I've turned the other microwave up and put it on 8 or the number 8 or 9, and it's pulling 13, 14, 1,500 watts quite easily. I mean, I wouldn't try to do it for 30 minutes, but it does what it's supposed to do. Anyways, folks, that's just what's happening in my world. I hope your world is okay. Anybody that's just coming in here, I'm actually not a bad guy. It's just that I'm so tired of the, just the stupendous ignorance of people right now that I've just kind of given up. And uh, I just call it the way I see it, which is everybody out there is a fucking moron. They're like fucking zombies. They don't care. They're worse than zombies because at least zombies don't have any feelings one way or another. You fucking idiots out there, you all think that you're smart. And that's a problem. When you run into somebody like me who actually knows history and so forth, you don't, you're not smart at all. So take it for what you will. My subs are smart people. They've been with me here through five or six channels, some of them. It's unbelievable. Take care. Have a nice weekend. And I will see you at the movies. Bye.